Okay, so here we have a possibility that you can have cooling of the gas. Now, let us try and see how can one go about calculating this mu jt. So here I will be a bit quick and let's go over the basic relations and derivations. So we will try and calculate mu jt. Our attempt will be to calculate mu jt which is delta t by delta p at constant enthalpy. dh is delta, delta h by delta t at constant pressure dt plus delta h by delta p at constant temperature tp. And since it's an isenthalpic process, the Joule-Thomson is an isenthalpic process, you will get delta t using this above relation you can show and using this you put it here and then you take delta t by delta p at constant enthalpy. Just from this above equations you can show that it is equal to minus delta h by delta p at constant temperature divided by delta h by delta t at constant pressure. Now dh is also equal to T ds plus vdp from your thermodynamics courses and you can show that delta h by delta p therefore at constant temperature is equal to T delta s by delta p at constant temperature plus volume. and delta h by delta t at constant pressure would be nothing else but from this expression you would get it equal to t delta s by delta t which is nothing else but dq by dt at constant pressure which is the specific heat at constant pressure. So from this expression which is equal to mu jt we can show and using these two expressions mu jt is equal to you substitute these here it is equal to minus t delta s by delta p at constant temperature plus v divided by cp. Here we again this is not very convenient in terms of measurements so to measure we use another thermodynamic relation that delta s by delta p at constant temperature is nothing else but minus delta v by delta t at constant pressure. If you substitute this here back here then you will get your relation that mu jt your joule thomson coefficient it comes in a more convenient form in terms of measurable physical quantities delta v by delta t minus v. This is your expression for the joule thomson coefficient it's important to note here is that if you use pv is equal to nrt if you use this expression to calculate this this is the ideal gas equation then you will land up with mu joule thomson as equal to zero. There will be no change in temperature of the gas for an ideal gas. And this is a very important point. Ideal gas are non-interacting 
particles whose relation is PV is equal to nRT and it is very easy to show that if you substitute if you just find out delta V by delta T from this expression you will itself see that mu JT will be equal to 0. However, so therefore ideal gases will not give rise to any change in temperature whether heating or cooling. How about a non-ideal gas and the simplest non-ideal gas that we can think of or know is the Van der Waals gas whose relation is equal to P is equal to RT by V minus B minus A by V square and So you have the expression for the Van der Waals gas and you can use something called as a virial expansion which I am sure you all are familiar with, you all have done it before when you have looked at gases. Z is equal to PV by RT, you define this and which in terms of this above expression would be V by V minus B minus A by V times RT which is equal to 1 minus B by Vm uh, V 1 minus B by V raised to minus 1 minus A by V RT. Now note that B by Vm will be much much less than 1 and so therefore you can do an expansion and so Z which is equal to PV by RT is of the order of 1 plus B by V plus B by V the whole square plus so on minus A by V into RT and this can be simplified further that Z is equal to PV by RT is 1 plus B minus A by RT 1 over V plus B by V the whole square and higher order corrections. These are very small corrections because they are appearing in powers of B by V. So because these are powers of B by V, okay, the real temperature dependence comes here and all the other higher powers go as um, uh, powers of B by V. So I'm sorry. You return back to this expression. This is called as the virial expansion and P by V RT is basically 1 plus B minus A over RT 1 by V plus higher order corrections. For now we will just look at the leading order. And so now what you can do is that you can uh, multiply this expression by this whole thing you can multiply it by RT by P and then you will get V is of the order of RT by P plus B minus A by RT, RT by PV plus higher order corrections. So, to leading order RT by PV, this 
R T by P V is R T by P V is of the order of one. These are all corrections. These are all higher order corrections to leading order. It is of the order of one. So one approximation that we can make is that we can reduce replace this by one. Okay, because you can substitute this whole bracket here and put it here, and then you will get uh, R T. by p plus this bracket because there is a one out here so the idea is that you have to replace this here for this okay and when you do that okay uh, to leading order this will be one and there will be higher order corrections which will be much weaker so to leading order this will look like v is equal to rt by p plus b minus a by rt and there will be higher order corrections which will be much weaker which one can show is much much weaker okay and therefore <coughs> your mu joule thomson if you now calculate which is 1 by cp t delta v by delta t constant pressure minus v if you calculate this then this will turn out to be mu joule thomson would be 2a by rt minus b you just take the derivative of this and you can show that 2a by rt minus b by cp plus much weaker corrections to leading order it is going to depend on this okay which will actually determine also the sign of mu jt so let us look at the leading order term of mu jt for a wonderwall's gas mu jt is 2a by b 2a by rt minus b by cp now what one can see is that for okay so let's for very low temperatures 2a by rt will be much greater than b and therefore mu jt will be greater than 0 and mu jt greater than 0 implies if you recall t2 is less than t1 which means that there will be cooling of the gas so if you have a wonderwall gas which is taken to very low temperatures then mu jt by uh, then mu jt would turn out to be positive would turn out to be greater than 0 and then in that case the gas would always cool however for high temperatures for high temperatures 2a by rt could become less than b and when it does that then mu jt will become less than 0 okay and when it becomes less than 0 t2 is becomes greater than t1 t2 becomes greater than t1 and this implies heating of the gas so if you are at certain temperatures if you are at certain temperatures where 2a by rt becomes less than this b for the gas then instead of cooling the gas you can start warming it up when you do a joule thomson expansion and so therefore there is a characteristic temperature which is called as the inversion temperature which is the point at which 2a by rt inversion is equal to b if you look at the expression for mu this is the point at which mu jt becomes equal to 0 
the mu jt to leading order the leading order term becomes of the order of zero and that is the t inversion point and so t inversion is where b into t inversion is the temperature at which mu jt is equal to zero or it is equal to 2a by rb So if you are below the inversion temperature, then mu jt becomes positive and if mu jt becomes positive, then if you do a joule thomson expansion of the gas, it's going to. So if you are maintaining the gas at a temperature T, which is less than T inversion, then there will be cooling of the gas. If you are maintaining the gas at a temperature T, which is greater than T inversion, then there will be heating of the gas.